But that woman who police say was attacked was just trying to get her mail. Now many of her neighbors tonight are applauding her action. So take a look at this video. So this all happened last night. It was around 530 on the 1300 block of Chimney Wood. It's when police say that woman was getting her mail. Now they say a white van pulled up and a man approached her pulled her shirt over her head and wrapped her face with it. Now, police say that man then pulled his arm around her neck, but the woman kicked the man between his legs and was able to run to her car and call police. We did speak with one of the woman's neighbors. Take a listen. Women are not necessarily damsels in distress, um, especially not New Orleans women. And so, uh, again, I'm not surprised that she fought back. I'm glad that she did. And unfortunately, or, you know, Unfortunately for him, it worked. So um, I'm not surprised. I'm happy that it happened because people are supposed to fight back. Isn't that what we claim to stand for after Katrina and before Katrina? So we did reach out to the property owners where this all happened. We haven't heard back. Of course, call police if you've got any information. And coming up all new at 5 o'clock, you'll hear from one woman who says she was robbed in that complex before. Reporting live at NOPD headquarters, I'm Aubrey Killian. WDSU News. Aubrey, thank you. In St. Tammany Parish, your former Fountain Blue High School coach will spend up to five years in jail for molesting a student. 38-year-old William Leto, a former math teacher and assistant basketball coach, was allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with a 16-year-old student. He pleaded guilty to a molestation charge. He will not have the benefit of parole. We're learning more today about the man accused of shooting Congressman Steve Scalise and wounding others as at a Virginia baseball field. Today, FBI investigated Investigators revealed more details about 66 year old James Hoskinson of Belleville, Illinois. Authorities say he acted alone and had no link to terrorism. They also say he was arrested back in 2006 for domestic violence and had anger management issues. According to officials, they also delivered a piece of discovered rather a piece of paper with Hoskinson where he wrote the names of six congressmen, but they didn't share what those names were. So what we do know is he fired over 60 shots um, from the third base side of the field. Um, 50 of those were from his SKS rifle, approximately 50 of those were from his SKS rifle. But we do not know his intentions on the potential target. As for Congressman Scalise, he remains hospitalized, but his condition has been upgraded to fair. All right, a live look at traffic on your Wednesday afternoon. Take a look here. This is I-10 at Louisa here. You can see some slick roads, but getting a little busier on the roadways. And this is what it looked like in Central City in New Orleans today. Plenty of rain, wet roads in this area as well. Absolutely. Chief Meteorologist Mark Adora and Meteorologist Damon Singleton in the Weather Center with more on our conditions, guys. How about it? I was in that on Louisa. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, it was scary. I was going 45 miles per hour in the interstate. I uh, was one of the people others don't like, right? I was, I was <laughs> driving down General de Gaulle. The power lines were down and the road was completely blocked. So I, I had to get around that. I, I, I know what you mean. You know, you have truly got to be careful because one of the main problems, you can see out the window, sure, we've got rain, but do you see how the camera is shaking? Winds at the lakefront, 35 miles per hour over in Gulfport, 37. And, you know, that makes for really hazardous driving. Very hazardous driving. Very slippery roads and those high profile vehicles, the trucks especially, they'll, they'll move. So be very careful. And it's all because of Cindy. So let's look at Cindy. Cindy right now about 135 miles to the south of Lake Charles. It's on the move northwest nine miles per hour. The good news is the wind's not as strong at about 50 miles per hour. But every time you get one of those rain bands moving on shore and you get one of those stronger storms, you can have winds gust to 60 miles per hour. Now Cindy expected to make landfall late tonight, early in the morning, and then it's going to move to to the north, then to the northeast, and some of the tail of Cindy is actually going to give us rain for a few days. So tornado watch through seven o'clock. Coastal flood advisory through 10 o'clock. Now, here's the deal on that coastal flood advisory. It's pushing water on shore, and so you have the tides running about two to three feet above normal. Tropical storm warning west of the river. 
three to six inches of rain still possible. Rain is going to be off and on through Thursday. Gusty winds of 25 to 45 miles per hour just in your garden variety rain. And then in some of those storms, they could gust to 60. Here is a look at the forecast sustained winds. So going into this evening, hang on to the steering wheel. Going into the morning, it's the same thing. The winds becoming more southerly though. So that means more of a flooding issue along those south facing shorelines. We can look at the coast. So what we have are winds southeast 25 to 30 to 40 knots tonight and 25 to 30 knots tomorrow. This is where we've got the gale warning, that area in orange. Notice how New Orleans not included in it anymore. The Tornado watch, all of southeast Louisiana, south Mississippi, flash flood watch through 7 o'clock Thursday. So we still have that potential, potential for additional rain and flood issues and the coastal flood advisory. There you can see it. The big concern we've had, all of these rain bands moving on shore. We've had numerous tornado warnings issued, and this is one storm where we have a severe thunderstorm warning, now no longer in effect, but there's that heavy rain right over the northern portion of St. Tammany moving into Washington Parish. Thankfully, that looks like it's diminishing, but just to the east of Angie, it's looking pretty heavy. Here's the wider view, and the good news is, I'm not seeing as many rain bands right now, so that's great. Metro, you've got a little bit of rain down across Plaquemines. Plaquemines has been pounded, heard from Barbara over in Poitras, and she said that she had five inches of rain overnight. There is a look at Cindy, not as org, or rather a little bit better organized, and that you've got more of a round circulation occurring. So dry air has been the big issue with this system. We're looking at the forecast. We are seeing that potential for a break in the rain. Still have 70% for tonight, 70% for Thursday, and then as you go into Friday, 60% chance. What do you think, Damon? I'm thinking uh, we're probably going to see a lot more of that rainfall. Looks like that's going to make its way into the weekend as well with the rain chances on Saturday being as high as 50%. But take a look at that model uh, that was running just a moment ago and you can see that rainfall potential is definitely with us for uh, the overnight hours and into tomorrow, possibly even stretching into your Friday as well. And you can see that pretty clearly in, in that picture. Then the frontal boundary makes its way towards us here in southeast Louisiana. And this is the, the picture on Saturday at noontime. And as you can see, a lot of rainfall potential with us then as well. Right now, it's 82 degrees over the airport. Some mostly cloudy skies, 88% humidity. And the temperatures outside in the upper 70s to the low 80s. I'm expecting those temperatures uh, to up into the mid 80s tomorrow and for the next couple of days, some mid to upper 80s. And notice the rainfall chance is going down to 50% into your Saturday and Sunday. No room for negativity. I'm Sharif Ishak in Omaha. And coming up, one LSU Tiger tells the fan base to stay positive and relax. And coming up tonight in primetime right here on WDSU at 7, it's Little Big Shots. Then at 8 and 8.30, it's the Carmichael Show. That's followed at 9 by This Is Us. Then, of course, join us for WDSU News at 10, followed by The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. All right, for the LSU Tigers, staying alive in Omaha means beating Florida State tonight. And sports anchor Sharif Ishak is in Omaha with more on the LSU Tigers and their hunt for a World Series championship. The LSU Tigers are going into this game very confident and positive. Yes, positive vibes. That's what they need for themselves and their fan base, which, of course, voiced their displeasures Monday night after that beatdown Oregon State put on the Tigers, and it didn't sit all that well with second baseman Cole Freeman. I know they sometimes think this game's a lot easier uh, than it is. Um, you know, I think they expect everybody to get a hit. Uh, personally, just some of the stuff that I've seen on people saying about Kramer, it's kind of frustrating. Um, you know, the guy's been there for us, you know, all year. If you read it, you can't let it affect you. If you don't read it, that's that's better. But one thing that I have to do is constantly keep these kids in a positive frame of mind so that they believe that they can accomplish it. Because when you don't have belief, you have no chance. I think people, especially when you win 17 games in a row, uh, think you're perfect. And 
uh, nobody, no team in America, no person in America is perfect. The top of the lineup certainly needs to produce much more in this game. Hitters one through four went for a combined four of 24 through the first two games as Cole Freeman and Kramer Robertson went a combined one of 16. In Omaha, Sharif Aishak, WDSU News. Well, still to come on the news at four, we continue to track Tropical Storm Cindy and the impact of the system. We'll be right back. Right now at 430, the, the governor declares a state of emergency for the state of Louisiana as we wait for Tropical Storm Cindy to make landfall. Impacts are being felt, especially in low lying areas. Water spouts, in fact, have been spotted in southeast Louisiana and in coastal Mississippi and flooding also reported at this hour. Chief Meteorologist Margaret Orr and Meteorologist Damon Singleton, they're in the Weather Center with Cindy's track. <laughs> OK, Cindy is making landfall late tonight, early in the morning, right on the Texas Louisiana border. But here's the deal. It doesn't really matter where Cindy is making landfall because I mean, we've got impacts right here. We've got these impacts on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We sure do a lot of rainfall for the last several hours, and that's probably going to continue for several more hours tonight and then uh, during the overnight hours as well. So if you're if you're in an, in an area in southeast Louisiana that isn't seeing much rainfall or hasn't seen much rainfall, you could possibly see a lot of that rainfall as we go through the evening and overnight hours. And let me tell you, the wind is blowing right now only gusting to 28 miles per hour, but the last hour it was 35, 38 miles per hour. So you've really got to hang on to the steering wheel. Watch out for those wind gusts as well. <sighs> I'm telling you. All right, let's look at where we've got that tornado watch because it's still in effect until 7 o'clock tonight. And there's the area. It's basically our entire viewing area. And we've had quite a few tornado warnings today. There is that slight risk for severe storms tonight and into the early morning hours. It's damaging winds and tornadoes that you've got the risk for. Plus, we've got that coastal flood advisory because we've had this onshore flow. And do you see the dark green showing up here? Those are all of the rivers that are now on the rise. And if you look over here by Mobile, you know what they've got? They've got a tornado warning. And that again is with the onshore flow with these rain bands that are moving on shore. And as they move on shore, you get a spin going and you have a water spout that then becomes a tornado when it moves on shore. What we have, these are the rain bands that we have right now. And in those bands, you've got the potential to get the rough weather. But we have had rain. This is the past 48 hours. So you can see, thankfully, offshore, that's where the really heaviest stuff was. But all along Plaquemines Parish to St. Bernard, you had four, five, even uh, close to seven inches of rain. On the North Shore, you've had it as well. And especially Terrebonne Parish, Lafouche, the lower portion of Jefferson, that's where you've had the heaviest rain. Here is a look at the Mississippi Gulf Coast and you're thinking, oh, it doesn't look too bad right now. Well, we have had some really rough weather. Those blue tracks that you see there, those are storms that were rotating that had the potential to cause a tornado. But now you're not looking too bad over St. Tammany. Heaviest rain is over here in Washington Parish. Little bit of uh, rotation with that cell that is south of Franklinton. You've got rain on the causeway, not as heavy as it was earlier. That's great. And the good news is it's not that heavy right now for Plaquemines Parish. So we've got a little bit of a break with the heavier rain over towards Mobile and Pensacola. So here is a look at Cindy. Cindy looking a little bit more like a tropical system, still dealing with a lot of dry air, making landfall tonight right there at the Texas-Louisiana border late tonight into the early morning hours. Then it will move north and then to the northeast. And as it moves northeast. We're going to have kind of the tail end of uh, Cindy giving us some rain potential as you go into your Thursday and Friday. Even Saturday, you've got the chance of some rain. Then those rain chances begin to go down and there is a cold front in the future. I'll have more on that in just a moment. All right, Margaret, thanks. Well, heavy rains from Tropical Storm Cindy already causing some flooding. Although there are no evacuations, the governor issued a state of emergency today prepare for the worst while we hope and pray for the best. One of the things that I 
forgot to mention a while ago is there's an elevated risk of tornadoes as well. In fact, we, we're under a tornado watch uh, currently, uh, and there have been some specific warnings of tornadoes earlier uh, today, uh, especially around the New Orleans area. Now, the governor also said that this system will not just affect people in low lying areas, but that everyone needs to stay alert. But talking about low lying areas, the road headed into Grand Isle today taking on water. And WDSU reporter Jennifer Crockett continues our team coverage from Grand Isle with more. I'm here just steps away from the Gulf of Mexico. It's about as far as you can get in the state of Louisiana to the Gulf of Mexico. We're on the island of Grand Isle where you can see the waves are crashing into what used to be a barrier here. Yesterday, sand filled this whole area where now it has been carved out by waves crashing in. I'm joined now by Mayor of Grand Isle, David Carmadale, and tell me what happened overnight. 